The song Wagon Wheel is here to stay. It won't go away, even though most acoustic guitar players wish it would. But today, let's change our tune and check out five reasons why Wagon Wheel is the best campfire song ever. Hey TAC family, welcome to episode 194 of the Acoustic Tuesday Show. This show's all about bringing fun, focus, and progress to your guitar journey through my weekly Guitar Geek list, plus success stories from your fellow TAC members. Today, you're gonna learn what the main ingredient for regular progress on your guitar journey is and how it works. You'll be meeting TAC member Chow Bai, and he's gonna share with you the single most important element in his guitar journey that has pulled him through those times of feeling stuck and even unmotivated. Plus, you'll get your weekly dose of acoustic news you can use, which contains two amazing acoustic guitar arrangements of famous songs that will no doubt leave you breathless. But first, let's dig into why Wagon Wheel is one of the most necessary acoustic evils. I'm sure there are a million reasons as to why Wagon Wheel is considered cliche and one of the most overplayed songs ever. But today we're gonna look at the other end of the spectrum. We're gonna dig into why Wagon Wheel is one of the most important campfire songs ever to be sung. But first, let's dig into the history of the song a little bit. Bob Dylan started writing Wagon Wheel in 1973. He actually finished the chorus in 1973. 25 years later, Keith Secor from Old Crow Medicine Show finished Wagon Wheel by writing the verses. So it's actually a co-write between Bob Dylan and Keith Secor. Old Crow Medicine Show recorded the song, and I believe, if my memory is serving me correctly, I believe it went platinum after they recorded it. So they were certainly the first band to really put this song on the map. And that makes sense because, well, one of their members wrote it. But it's been recorded by a ton of bands since then. Most recently, uh, Darius Rucker, formerly of Hootie and the Blowfish, uh, recorded it, and it seemed to reinvigorate audiences with this song, and even expose the song to new audiences, almost reinforcing the fact that it's cliche and overplayed. But again, we're gonna take a different angle on this song and figure out why it's the most important campfire song. And I've got five reasons for you. In fact, reason number one as to why Wagon Wheel is so important is the chord progression. It's one of the most common chord progressions in recorded music, in music in general. It contains the one, the four, the five, and the six minor, the four most popular chords in any key. And that's pretty darn important because if you learn Wagon Wheel, if you learn the chord progression to Wagon Wheel, that means you've learned the chords and chord progression to thousands, if not millions of other songs. Now, granted, you can't remember millions of songs, but that just shows the potency that this tiny little simple chord progression has. Okay, let's move on to reason number two. And reason number two as to why Wagon Wheel is so important as a campfire song is because the verse and the chorus is the same exact chord progression. In fact, let me take you in the studio and I'll just go ahead and teach it to you. So you know that the chord progression to Wagon Wheel is important, and you know that the chord progression for the verse and the chorus is the exact same. But what is the chord progression? Let me go ahead and teach that to you right now. So I'm gonna teach this to you in the key of G, but then at the end, I'll give you the Nashville numbers so you can apply it to any key that you want. So I'm gonna do this measure by measure. We start out with G for a measure. Then we move to D for a measure. E minor for a measure. C for a measure. That's the first half of the chord progression. The second half is very similar with only one subtle change. We then go to a G for a measure, a D for a measure, and then instead of going to the E minor, we go straight to the C, this time for two measures. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and play through this chord progression, and I'll kind of sing the chord names along with it. So you get a sense of how the chord progression sounds in its entirety, and you can practice the changes with me. G, 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 D, 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 E minor, up to C. G to D to C. So there you have it. It's a pretty easy and effective chord progression. As I mentioned before, you're gonna see this chord progression and these chords in tons of songs. So 
this is very much worth your time if you don't know it yet. Now, in terms of the Nashville number system, so you can play this in any key, it starts on the one chord, goes to the five, then to the six minor, and then to the four. That's the first half, and then for the second half, we have a one, five, and then a four. So there you have it, the chord progression to Wagon Wheel. My third defensive Wagon Wheel, the third reason why I think Wagon Wheel is one of the most important campfire songs, is that you can play it at any speed and it'll sound great. You can play it slow like a ballad, it'll sound awesome. You can play it fast in a bluegrass style, it'll sound awesome. And I think this is a key ingredient for any campfire song because, well, it's good for the song, but it's also good for the participants. If you're playing around people that maybe just started guitar or pretty new to the guitar, playing it slow is awesome because it allows them to join in. If you've been playing for a while and are playing with people that have been playing for a while, you can play it faster and they can join in and have just as much fun. And just to prove a point, let me take you into the studio and I'll take it at two different speeds to show you how effective this song actually is. One, two, one, two, three, four. Rock me, mama, like a wagon wheel. Rock me, mama, any way you feel. Hey, mama, rock me. Rock me, mama, like the wind and the rain. Rock me, mama, like a southbound train. Hey, mama, rock me. The fourth reason I think Wagon Wheel is the ultimate campfire song is actually related to the last reason, but instead of speed, we're gonna talk about style. Wagon Wheel works well in a variety of styles. You can finger pick it, you can flat pick it, you can strum it, you can chicken pick it. You can really do anything with the song and it'll sound awesome. And it makes it incredibly accessible. For those that like to finger pick, you can join in. For those that like to strum, you can join in. For those that want to flat pick, you can join in. Let me show you how a couple of different styles lay out on this tune. The fifth and most important reason that Wagon Wheel is the ultimate campfire song is that it involves everyone. This song is easy to teach, it's easy to play, it's easy to repeat. You can play Wagon Wheel until the sun comes up if you want to. Bottom line, this song is accessible to everyone. If someone is standing next to you around the fire and they don't play guitar, they can sing along. If someone just started playing guitar and they wanna dip their toe into the water of jamming, they can strum the chords. If someone wants to take a lead break, they can take a lead break. If someone wants to finger pick it, they can finger pick it. Bottom line, this song is accessible to everyone. And to me, that is the number one ingredient of an ultimate campfire song. Wagon Wheel contains it. Bingo bango, we've got ourselves a winner. The ultimate campfire song, in my humble opinion. But this is where I have a question for you. What is your favorite campfire song? Make sure to let me know in the comments below. Do you ever ask yourself how to get through a guitar rut? Do you ever wonder how to get through those times where you feel like guitar playing is a chore and that maybe you're not getting any better at all? The answer is consistency. It's a regular and fun guitar routine. Case in point, TAC member Chow Bai went through this very thing that I mentioned. He felt like guitar playing was a chore. However, 
he kept at his guitar routine and that's exactly what pulled him through. Here's what Chow had to say. These past two weeks have been a chore guitar wise. I've been doing the challenges as normal, but the enjoyment wasn't what it usually is. Thankfully, today's lesson, along with yesterday's speed challenge I'd forgotten to do, put a smile back on my face. Sometimes you just gotta keep your head up during those times, or at least know it's only temporary. I knew well the latter, so I'm extra glad today has seen a return to my positive norm. It's not so much a small win for myself, but a reminder to others just starting out to hang in there. That lull you're in is just a brief but necessary pothole on the road to success. As weird as it sounds, learn to enjoy them because it'll be those character-defining moments that'll harden your resolve and make you a better player. Wonderfully said. I think Chow just stated the core ingredient, the, the most effective ingredient in any guitar routine, and that is consistency. That consistency of your guitar routine keeps you showing up. And if you continue to show up, you'll pull through those down moments and come out the other end a much better player. So I want to thank Chow so much for sharing his story and kind of admitting that, you know, things weren't going the way I wanted them to, but I kept showing up. And because I kept showing up, I got back on the positive end of things and I'm feeling good about my guitar playing. So very awesome. And I just, uh, again, huge thanks to Chow. Next up, uh, we've got a guitar snow from Canada. Yes, our neighbors to the north here. This is Craig V. Rodriguez from Burnaby, British Columbia, Canada. And here's what he has in his guitar snow. A Taylor 110 CE, a Jackson Dinky, a Fender Hot Rod Stratocaster, a Fender Hot Rod Telecaster, and a Gibson Shred X Explorer. That was the June 2008 guitar of the month. Now, a little birdie told me that Craig just added a Taylor GS Mini to that guitar arsenal. It's not pictured, but he may or may not have won it during uh, Tony's Acoustic Challenge giveaway. So congratulations, Craig. That's a hell of a guitar arsenal. Now, if you're sitting there and you're thinking, well, I have a guitar arsenal. I want to share it on the Acoustic Tuesday show. Please do so. All you have to do is follow three simple steps. Step number one, go to AcousticTuesday.store and pick up yourself a guitar arsenal shirt. Step number two, once that shirt arrives, put it on and take a picture amongst all of your guitars. And step number three, please visit AcousticLife.tv. Once you're there, click on the submit link in the top menu. You can upload the picture of your guitar arsenal and tell us what is in it. Let's head back to episode 188 of the Acoustic Tuesday Show. Yes, some time ago. And that's where I talked about guitar makers that make Martins better than Martin guitar. Wow, you wanna talk, you wanna talk a boatload of comments? You know, usually there's a fair amount of comments on the Acoustic Tuesday Show. This show had like, uh, last time I checked, it had like 200 some comments and lots of opinions. Holy smokes. A lot of votes for Boucher guitars, which, I'm kind of, you know, I, I'm kind of kicking myself I didn't include them on my list because Boucher make incredible bluegrass dreadnoughts. I've gotten to play, I've gotten to play two of them, and I've been impressed by both. So I should just add that before we dig into the official comments. The first comment uh, comes from John Reed Roberts, and he says this in regards to guitar makers making Martins better than Martins. Pre-war is my favorite. Their HD and J models are at the top of the food chain of guitars. On another note, Mr. Policastro, can you do an episode like this one featuring one-man builders? Wayne Henderson, D.L. Wilson, Jackson Cunningham, Jimmy Edwards are a few that come to mind. Just a thought for what it's worth. Thanks for another great episode. Keep up the good work. JR from North Carolina. Awesome, JR. I agree with you. I think pre-war guitars are pretty darn amazing. And I also want to thank you for the topic recommendations. You know, if, if you're sitting there at home and you're thinking, gosh, you know, I love the show. I, I would really dig if Tony talked about this builder, or I would really dig an episode on this topic. Throw it in the comments below. I read those comments after every show, and I actually pull a lot of ideas from those comments. So I should first thank you for the ideas, but also encourage you to share your ideas in the comments. Our next comment comes from Jeff Collins, who is definitely a Martin fan. Jeff says this, just like the Porsche motto, Martin, there is no substitute. You know, Jeff, I, I agree. I'm a huge Martin guitar fan, and I, I hope I made that clear at the beginning of the episode. That was not an episode knocking on Martin at all or throwing shade at Martin. It was simply, you know, we're in, the, we're in this wonderful time of guitar makers that are making absolutely mind-blowing instruments. And I just wanted to celebrate a few that were making, you know, traditional style dreadnoughts that capture that Martin tone, that capture that the, the, the bluegrass tonal set that we really dig as guitar geeks. So uh, thank you for your comment, Jeff. Our next one comes from Peter Abbey, and he poses a fair question. Are you factoring in price, Tony? If not, this is misleading. 
If you're going to compare these builders with Martin, you should compare them with the Martin Authentic series, which are in line with the lower end models from Pre-War, Hudson Dalton, Santa Cruz Guitar Company, and Callings. You know, I, I thought about this comment, Peter, and there were actually quite a few people asking the same question. And if you get into the Martin Custom Shop and you're talking hide glue, uh, hand scallop bracing, etc., you know, the things that make those Custom Shop Martins pretty darn sweet, in my opinion, I think we're in terms of price, I think we're on par with with models made from from Calling Santa Cruz uh, and the other other makers that I mentioned. So I did consider price, and I guess maybe I should have been more specific in comparing it to the the Martin Custom Shop uh, because I do believe these smaller luthiers are very much custom shops in and of themselves uh, because there are so few hands on the guitar. So just adding some clarity there. Uh, really appreciate the comment, of course. Uh, next comment comes from Andrew Turnbow, and he says this, Tony, I'm new to this channel and I'm just starting my guitar journey at 30. Hopefully that's not too late in life. What a channel to fall into though. Lots of history and information on the channel by the looks of it. Also love that it is all about acoustic. If you have any tips or tricks or suggestions on where to start for guitar, I'm all ears. Same for anyone on this channel or reading this post. Can't wait to start from Acoustic Tuesday episode one. Andrew, I'm so glad you're watching the show. I'm so glad that you found the channel. And I have to say, I'm glad you're starting your guitar journey at 30. And no, that is not too late. You know, within Tony's Acoustic Challenge, we've got guitar players that are starting their guitar journey at 50, 60 years old. We've got actually younger kids starting their guitar journey. So really at any point in time you start your guitar journey, journey that is the perfect point. And I'm, I'm so pumped for you and I'm so excited for what you're going to discover in your guitar journey because I think it's just as much discovering what you can do with a guitar as much as, you know, in a way, kind of learning about yourself through the guitar. At least that's what my journey has kind of consisted of as well. And I think a lot of guitar geeks that watch the show would say the same thing for themselves and their guitar journey. So welcome, welcome aboard, Andrew. And of course, I would encourage you to check out Tony's Acoustic Challenge. I would be remiss if I didn't mention that. Uh, there's a great starting program on that, 30 Days to Play, which takes, takes you from knowing nothing about guitar all the way to playing your first songs and, and really having fun with the instrument, which is the reason why, well, we get into the instrument in the first place. Our next comment comes from Anthony Filipowski. He recommended a brand that I've mentioned before on the Acoustic Tuesday show that for whatever reason didn't make my Martins better than Martin list, uh, Atkin Guitars overseas uh, in the UK. Their Atkin White Rice model specifically, he says, equals phenomenal sustain, tone, tone you do not want to put down. I'm trying to read that right. Phenomenal sustain, tone, you do not want to put it down. I'm just going to fill in some words there uh, because I'm not reading it uh, very clearly. Uh, our final comment comes from Lee Harper. And I want to just, disclaimer, Guitar Geeks, you're about to see something that is very graphic and will hurt your Guitar Geek heart. Uh, so I'm just going to say that. I'm going to uh, read the comment and then we're going to play a clip. Lee Harper says this, Last night, Jimmy Fallon smashed a Martin HD 28. I could not believe he would do that. It was Friday, May 28th. He was playing and singing when he went on stage and looked at Questlove and grabbed the guitar by the neck and smashed it on the corner of the stage. Then the camera showed a close-up of the guitar laying on the floor smashed to pieces. It was hard to watch and I love Jimmy Fallon, but that sucked and was not funny at all. Lee, I wanna thank you for bringing this to my attention. Uh, let's go ahead and, and play the clip and then I'll come back and share my thoughts on it. And here it is. Yeah, so first of all, I agree with Lee. Not cool. Uh, I'm a Jimmy Fallon fan. I think he's hilarious, but why you got to smash it? what looks to be an HD 28? I mean, you got East Indian Rosewood back inside. You got a spruce top. Why would you smash that? Why would you smash that? I know it was an expression of emotion, but it just hurt my heart. It really hurt my heart. I didn't, I didn't like seeing that. So Lee, I want to thank you for bringing that to my attention, to our attention as a Guitar Geek community. And we can, uh, we can all light a candle for that Martin HD 28 that went down, that, that shouldn't have went down. Uh, so anyways, uh, I know that's a somber note, but I'm going to end the comments there. I think we can all kind of digest what just happened. And I just want to thank everyone for leaving comments on the show. 
Uh, Y'all have awesome ideas, and I really appreciate you expressing your opinions about, you know, different guitar manufacturers, et cetera. It's just, it's so cool to to know you. I I really, uh, like I said, I I think the comments are a great spot for us to have a discussion, and I always just love the, the ideas and discussions that come from the comments section. So thank you again, and cheers to you, Guitar Geeks. Now it's time for acoustic guitar news you can use. And yes, indeed, I've got uh, one funny thing and two things that will are basically jaw droppers for you. So let's let's do a, a, a jaw dropper sandwich. We're gonna start with a jaw dropper. We're gonna end with a jaw dropper and we're gonna put a little funny comedy in the center. So uh, the first jaw dropper is brought to you by Luca Stricagnoli. He's at it again. He, his skills when it comes to arrangement on the acoustic guitar are top notch, top of the heap. Incredible. Uh, He just arranged the song Another Day in Paradise by Phil Collins, and no words. I I look at this, and I look at him playing, and I think, how do you do that? How does your brain work that way? How can I get some of that? Uh, So without further ado, let's have a look and a listen. Pretty insane stuff from Luca. I mean, just a um, what a brilliant talent. And I mean, it's almost it's almost even hard to say that he's playing acoustic guitar because he's playing like what seems like 14 different things. The, the guy's like an orchestra. I, I don't even know how he coordinates all of that. So very cool. Huge thanks to Luca for sharing his his musical brilliance with all of us. Uh, the next thing I have, the center of the jaw dropper sandwich, is a funny meme I found. Again, it's brought to us by our friends at Imperial Vintage Guitars. And it's simply, uh, well, you'll see, it's a picture of a man with a lot of medals, a highly decorated man. And the the, the heading says, me, if I had a medal for every guitar, I thought about buying. And I saw this and I thought, that's about right. That's about right if you've spent any evenings on Reverb.com or surfing your favorite uh, musical instrument store's website and you had a medal for every time you thought about buying a guitar, you might have an outfit just like this individual in the picture. Uh, so let's go ahead and, and bookend the Jaw Dropper Sandwich with another acoustic guitar arrangement that is from an artist I greatly respect, Respect I greatly admire. And I just, again, I love seeing artists transform these songs into their own. And I love seeing how their brain works in terms of arrangement. So here's Nathaniel Murphy from Chicago Music Exchange playing the song Come As You Are by Nirvana on a single acoustic guitar. And what's the acoustic guitar? It's an Atkin Guitars guitar. We just talked about that in the comments section. How cool is that? Here's Nathaniel. And I think I'll end the show with my regular pun. On that note, I think it's time to wrap up the Acoustic Tuesday show. But before I wrap it up, let's go ahead and take a sneak peek into next week. Next week, we're gonna talk about the ins and outs of playing fast and how you can actually play faster than you think you can. Yes, it's all about the metronome and playing fast next week. That's one you're not gonna wanna miss because I've got some surprising tips for you. Remember, you can catch the Acoustic Tuesday show, well, every single Tuesday here on YouTube at 10 a.m. Mountain Time. I wanna thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you for sharing your time with me. Thank you for being a guitar geek. And remember this, your guitar success, however you define it, is directly related to your guitar routine. So please invest the time in developing your guitar routine and make sure to have fun every single day you play. Remember Chow from earlier? He invested in his guitar routine and it pulled him through a difficult time. And it will pull you through a difficult time if you invest in your guitar routine as well. So thank you again for watching today. Guitar Geeks Unite, and I'll see you next Tuesday on the Acoustic Tuesday Show. Cheers. (laughs) 